Okay, guys, welcome back to the tank club. We're going to look at uh, mythic items for the Deadlands patch. Uh, we're going to go through all mythic items, not just the new ones, but all of them, and just have a look at what is useful from the tank perspective. Like, is there any use of mythic items? Is it worth grinding out for them? Because some of them are really hard to get. Is it worth it? We're going to find out. We're going to start with the, um, the Markarth mythic items, uh, first of all. So in Markarth, we've got two mythic, uh, two mythic uh, pieces. We've got the Pearls of Alnafe, Ring of the Pale Order. Now, the Pearls of Elnafe, um were a good option for tanks in terms of group utility, um, especially for like fast ultigen builds. For off tanks, in si especially situations where the damage isn't quite that high and you can afford to be spamming. Uh, the use of this skill, uh, the use of this mythic. So if we just quickly have a look at it. When you use resources to cast a healing ability while in combat and your dominant resource is under 30%, you gain 5 ultima. Now what this means is, um, it doesn't have a cooldown and you can basically spam it to get 5 ultimate constantly. So you, let, let's say your stamina is your highest resource. That's what it means by dominant. So if you've got 30k stamina and 25k magicka, you've got to have your stamina under 30%. When your stamina is under 30% and you cast a healing ability in combat, you gain 5 ultimate. So what you can actually do is you can farm ultimate from this mythic item. Now, the problem, um, well, the reason why this was so common to use on a tank in recent patches is the main tank would always typically, always, in most situations, use um, Encratis. The healers always have Symphony of Blades. So that leaves kind of one of the healers and one of the tanks to kind of find something else to use and what is most usable. A lot of groups will use Sentinel on the um, second healer. It's not really that good though. So some groups, especially some higher tier groups, would have put Pearls of Elnafe on the other healer. Um, there's not really many good off-tank sets in terms of monster sets either, which means you could drop the tank monster set in place of the Pearls of Elnafe. So it's, it's a good option for alt building in... Uh, group content especially the only issue is is you've got to really think about it. it's got you've got to be able to activate this and it can be quite difficult so i've seen situations where people ask for the pearls of elnafe on the off tank but then it's a group that don't have much experience let's say you, and let's say you've got an off tank going for tiktok tormentor and you're trying to use this on the off tank yeah you can do but if it's like you first have a time trying to do it you're going to really struggle to find the right times to try and proc it um, and you've got to really, you've got to think about it really, really intense, and you've got to forcefully make an effort to proc this and make it work. So it's not something you're going to be doing by accident, um, and it's not something you want to really use on a main tank because trying to bring your resources under 30% just to proc the ultra game, you don't want to be sitting under 30% stamina on a main tank for like prolonged periods of time, especially if you're trying to also keep up stagger. You're trying to do things like that. It's going to be hard not to boost your stats back up to full because. It just means you're going to really struggle. So the Pearls of Elnafe, it's more of a higher tier monster set, like an alternative, a monster set alternative for really good groups and for people who are really understanding and aware of how to use it. Uh, next, we've got Ring of the Pale Order. Now, this is not something um, you would use as a tank, typically. So the only times I use this, so I will use this on a tank, it's when I'm doing the arenas. So if I'm doing Maelstrom Arena or Vatistran Hollows on a tank, typically I will run those with a hybridized tank build because I only play tank. But the way to get through those without even having to worry about self-healing is by slotting the Ring of the Pale Order. So restore 20 of the damage you deal. Sorry. Restore 20% of the damage you deal as health. This value is decreased by 4% per ally you are grouped with. You cannot be healed by anybody but yourself. So when you wear this, nobody else can heal you. So you don't really want to use it for dungeons. Uh, you need to be able to output decent damage to be able to get the healing back because you get 20% of your damage back as a heal. So it's good, but you need to be able to output some damage. And also, if you combine this with your CP for another 7% uh, damage uh, returned as uh, damage returned as health, then obviously you're getting a decent amount of returned health, and it's good. But there's not many situations it's worth using. As I say, the only one for me would be solo arenas. Solo situations, if you're doing some questing, you've got a hybridized build. The Accolade tank build fits the, the build for that, and it's, this is good on that build. Um, so that is the only time that it's really worth using. 
Right, Greymore Mythic Items. This is where Mythic Items were actually first introduced, was with the Greymore DLC. Um, there's a couple of, like, really situational ones in here. So, we'll start off with the most common one. So many, so many people ask me about this, and it's really hard to, to explain to people, like, why this isn't as good as it looks. So, we'll start off. Bloodlord's Embrace. It's a chest piece, a heavy chest piece. It seems really good. It comes in sturdy. Um... Dealing damage with a bash attack places a persistent, uncleansable blood curse on an enemy. You can only have one blood cursed enemy at a time, and dealing additional bash damage moves the blood curse. Blocking an attack from a blood cursed enemy restores 1605 magicka to you, and the effect can occur once every one second. So, it sounds kind of, it sounds pretty good. If we're being honest, if you consider the fact that magic recovery ticks every two seconds, in two seconds you're gaining over three thousand magicka, and that's the thing that people seem to think when they look at this this set. It's like, wow, that's basically three k magicka recovery. Now it's not; it's actually not. Um, so, what happens is you can only apply this to one enemy. So you you equip it. You bash the enemy and it applies the blood curse to that enemy. And then when you block an attack from that one enemy, it returns the magicka back to you. So that's how it kind of works. You just go and you, you have to bash an enemy. And it has to cause damage as well. If it's an enemy with a shield and they don't actually take damage, you can't apply it. So if we take an example of Zamaja um, in the portal in Cloudrest, if you bash the shade of Zamaja in the portal, because you can't actually do damage to it, it won't apply the blood curse to that enemy. If we think about a dungeon situation, um, most dungeons in the game are quite slow hitting, but hard hitting. Okay? So, if you go into an ad pull, this is going to be essentially kind of worthless because ads, because it can only be applied to one ad and ads die so fast, you're not really going to get any magicka back. So, you might get one or two ticks of magicka back maximum in an ad pull. If we think about dungeon bosses, you can only apply it to one boss. So if there's a boss with loads of ads, it doesn't matter how many ads there are, you're still only going to get one proc from the boss when it hits you and you block it. So it's not really that effective as it sounds. Like, if you also consider the speed at which bosses attack people, bosses don't attack that fast. So typically, most bosses in the game will hit you every couple of seconds. They don't hit one second, one second, one second. They're just constantly hitting you, hitting you, hitting you. The attacks come really, really slowly. So most bosses will do like a mechanic. One, two, three, four seconds, heavy attack or a light attack. And then a couple of seconds, then a heavy attack. A couple of seconds, maybe a mechanic or this and a that. Like, there's very few bosses that actually hit you really, really quickly to make this a useful set. You need enemies to be hitting you essentially every one second. And every second that you're not being hit by that one enemy, you are losing uh, magicka from the set. And it's becoming less and less useful. So... You have really got to consider it. Now, I'm not saying this is completely useless across the board everywhere. There are certain situations where I think if you're really struggling with magicka sustain for whatever reason in a very specific situation where you've got a boss that hits you very, very quickly, very, very often, then it's worth considering using this. So off the top of my head, one place I can think about using this in a very, very good way might be Falgraven hard mode um, in Kynes Aegis. The last boss hard mode that boss hits really, really quickly. Um, it hits like every two or three seconds. So in that situation, it seems kind of worth it because you have to spam skills in that trial. You have to be spamming Igneous Shield. You have to be casting a lot of skills. So if you're able to recoup some of the magical loss to be able to spam your skills more often and keep yourself alive, then it's going to be worthwhile. But in most situations, bosses just don't hit you fast enough. Um, another option might be Sunspire. I don't know if this would work, but the Dragon Breath, potentially, that ticks every half a second in Sunspire. So this is going to proc, like, on cooldown for, like, four or five seconds or whatever it is. Um, while the Dragon's Breath is on you, it's going to tick um, It's going to tick every second for those couple of seconds that the Dragon Breath's there. But that's the only time. It's worthless for the rest of the fight because the Dragon sometimes gets stuck in mechanics. So when you get a heavy attack... Uh, let's say Yolnikrin, you get the heavy attack and then it spawns in the Atros and then it's doing um, another mechanic and then it's doing... Do you know what I mean? Like, you can go 10 seconds without being hit. 
So that's the only issue. Uh, and this is why Gallonway in those situations also isn't a very good set, because you get hit so infrequently that you have a really low uptime. Um, if we consider, like, Asylum Sanctorium, that boss can sometimes take 30 or 40 seconds to hit you. So when you get to the Execute phase, you might have the Dragon's Breath, then you'll have the, the um, AoE Spit, then you'll have the Fire, then you'll have the Kite, and then you'll have um, the actual Light Attack. So you could have been waiting 40 seconds for this to proc. And this is also another reason why things like Stonekeeper are not that effective. We can combine all these things together, like Gallonway, Stonekeeper, Bloodlord's Embrace. They're all kind of in a similar boat where if you don't get hit often enough, they really, really diminish in their usefulness. Um, and it's much better to just consider using alternative options. So yeah, if you want to use this, have a think about the boss. Does it hit fast enough to utilize it? Would you be better off using something else? Most of the time, 99% of the time, you're better off using something else. In those 1% of situations where Magicka recovery, Magicka, um, like incoming Magicka is really, really intense, then yeah, absolutely give it a go. Uh, Malakath's Band of Brutality. Now, this is a damage set. Increases your damage done by 16%, but decreases your crit damage done by 50%. This is absolutely not really worth using for a tank. Um, I would not advise grinding this out or trying to get this because it's not really very useful at all. There's not really any situations where that would be something you'd want to do as a tank. In the past, this was good for Alkosh because Alkosh used to scale with some things and this could buff your Alkosh debuff. Now we don't use Alkosh. Now it doesn't also scale that way anymore. So this is not really useful. Uh, the Ring of the Wild Hunt is the next one. This is a very good uh, mythic item. Um, it's worth using this for very specific situations again um, if, if it's needed. So increases your movement speed by 15% while in combat. Increases your movement speed by 45% while out of combat. So the reason why you might consider using this, there are, again, it's situational. You're not going to use this every single place that you got. However, as a tank, you have to be at the front of your group. If you're behind your group and you're not getting to the next ad pull fast enough, if people are running ahead of you, it means that you need to look at, yeah, sometimes in dungeons and random dungeons, there might be an issue where people are running ahead and they're being a bit disrespectful. They're not waiting for the tank. They're jumping into fights. That does happen. But when it comes to like trials and more organized dungeons, maybe you do dungeons with a guild, you should always be the first person going into the apple. You should always be at the front of the pack. You should never be uh, slacking behind. Even in 7 Heavy, you should be at the front. And it's vital that you can move quickly as a tank. And we are slowed down uh, by certain things, but Ring of the Wild Hunt will help speed you up and bring you in line with that. So for ad pulls in dungeons and trials, this is a good mythic item to use. Uh, when you look at certain trials as well there are certain like bosses in trials where you might use this so one example would be as the off tank in asylum sanctuary in that trial one of the most important things is movement speed and utilizing the ring of the wild hunt to be able to stack lothis and and felms really easily onto saint Olms by sprinting around the room really quick using the ring of the wild hunt will help you achieve that and you'd want to you also get the movement speed uh, increase of 7% by it being the Swift Trait. So you get Swift Trait and the extra uh, increased movement speed in and out of combat. So this is really, really, really good. It's worth picking it up, especially if you're not sure how to increase your speed in alternative ways. You can use this. Um, in, in those kind of situations, like you can one bar, on an off tank especially, you can just one bar certain sets. Like you can one bar PA, you can one bar War Machine, you can one bar Sax Champion. So all of those sets are one barable. So you don't have to really worry about dropping a monster set either. You can use a monster set, the Ring of the Wild Hunt, because you can adjust your gear around two sets that can be one barable. So that works really, really well for off tanks especially, because you don't need to use a monster set a lot of the time. Um, so this is very, very good. It will help bring up that speed where it's needed, and in those situations, it's worth using. Uh, next one, the Snow Treaders. Um, I'm kind of in two minds about this one. Uh, while you are in combat, you are immune to snares and immobilizations that can be cleansed, but you cannot sprint. So, I'm trying to think of a place where you might want to use this. Now, like right off the top of my head again, I'm thinking Halls of Fabrications, fourth boss, the triplets. 
Maybe if you're like a brand new tank, you've never done it before. You can potentially put on the snow treaders. And when you've got the boss switch, the two tanks have a 3-2-1 switch. And you're running across the room. Um, sometimes there can be like claws in the ground that will like pull you in. They will immobilize you. Wearing the snow treaders would prevent that from happening. You should be able to run straight through the AoE and it wouldn't be able to immobilize you. In terms of a snare... In ad pools, potentially, like, you can be snared by ads when you're trying to run. I don't know. Like, there are very few situations I would really want to use the snow treaders if I had to use them. If someone said to me, use these in, a, like, a place where they're needed, I can't really think of many places. But anywhere that you get, like, immobilizations or snares, like, it's, it's quite easy to deal with immobilizations and snares in PvE content. Especially when you're kind of more experienced than you know a fight. If you are in a, a fight that you have no clue what to do, but you know there's like a snare or a mobilization, or you watch a video and those effects are there, you could consider wearing it for that. But for me, this is more of a PvP kind of setup. Um, I wouldn't really wear this very often in PvE. So it's definitely something that you could do when you're brand new in a situation where those things are, are there. Uh, Thrashian Stranglers. So again, another mythic item that I don't think is worth really grinding out for, but... Killing an enemy grants you a stack of slowed call for one second. Sorry. Killing an enemy grants you a stack of slowed call for one hour, up to a maximum of 50 stacks. Each stack increases your weapon and spell damage by 23, uh, reduces your max health by 120, and reduces effectiveness of your damage shields by 1%. So, if we think about this in a logical kind of manner, in a solo situation as a tank, if you don't need the Ring of the Pale Order, you could potentially use this to buff your damage because losing 120 health times 50 will have very uh, a very small impact for a tank. If you were like a 40k health tank and you don't really want to switch your gear, then I guess if you're doing like overland content, you could throw this on and then you could do a little bit of damage because your damage is going to be buffed by quite a bit. So it's an option, but it's not a realistic option for like actual content. You're not going to use this in dungeons, trials or arenas, but potentially in solo overland situations, it's worth throwing it on, if you've got it. I wouldn't go out my way to grind it, though. I really wouldn't. If you haven't already got it, I wouldn't bother getting it. Uh, but I do think it could be a, a reasonable way to buff up your damage as a tank. Um, if you want. If you want. Do you know what I mean? For overland content. Um, finally, for the Greymore Mythics, we've got the Talk of Tonal Constancy. Now, the Talk is, is kind of... Is alright. Again, as with many of the other mythic items, it's situational. It's very situational. So while your stamina is less than 50%, increases your magicka recovery by 450. While your magicka is less than 50%, increases your stamina recovery by 450. So, again, it kind of sounds better than it is because you've got to have low stamina to get the magicka recovery and the stamina recovery isn't that effective because most of the time as a tank you're going to be blocking. Now, places where I've liked to use this were off-tank situations where my resource usage is really intense. So when I was trying to run some kind of build that was using MK, PA, uh, Grasp, Empowering Grasp, Brittle, and I was trying to do all of that on a Necro tank, it was so resource intensive that this was an absolute lifesaver. So this helped me be able to keep up all of those things at the same time. Because when my stamina dropped low, which was quite often, boom, in comes the magic recovery. But then I'm using a lot of magic recovery because I'm casting Empire and Grasp a couple of times and I'm casting Blockade. I'm trying to keep up um, I'm trying to keep up Brittle as well. So all of those things combined made this really useful. Again, another one off tank in Sunspire Hard Mode Last Boss. You don't actually have to really block very much in that fight. You only have to block when, um, when the statues throw the rocks at you. That gives you a snare. Uh, you only have to block that. But it's quite easy to get your stamina low and your magicka low. But it's like quite, it can be quite resource intensive when you've got two, three, or four statues. This can be a very good option for getting through that. So I would say if you're kind of new to Sunspire off tanking, the last boss especially, this could be a very good option for you to get through that. Because you don't have to perma block. You don't have to stand there blocking uh, the statues. You kind of block intermittently when it's needed. 
and you have to circle and run around. You have to be moving a lot. You have to be casting a lot of skills. Um, potentially, you're going to be casting a lot of things like immovable, maybe, if you're new, or trying to remove snares and things like that. So for that, for those situations, again, it's worth using because it's going to give you a lot of recovery. 450 recovery is a lot. But the stamina recovery, like I say, is often wasted. The magical recovery is difficult to obtain because you need low stamina and you never really want to have low stamina. So if you are struggling for sustain, then have a look at this. Give it a little try and see. On a DK, you might be able to make use of it because when your stamina gets low, you can start... Like, your stamina gets low, your magical recovery goes up 450, you spam your shield, you get your stamina back. When your stamina drops low again, you spam your shield, then it in comes again. So there are ways and means that you could use it but is it the most effective way of sustaining? Absolutely not. But it's an option if you've got it, if you want to try it, if you think it's going to be useful for you. If you're not somebody who power blocks, it might be more useful. Like if if you don't block as often, like you don't have to block all the time in all content. There's some content where you just can block heavy attacks. You can just block like the light attacks happen every five seconds. So you just block once every five seconds. So you've got a lot of time where you're unblocked. And in that case, you might get some good use out of this. Uh, we'll go on to the Blackwood Mythic items next and then we'll go finally on to the the new patch that's coming out, the Deadlands, uh, we'll have a look at that. So, okay, um, Mythic Arms of Blackwood, Death Dealer's Fate, one of my absolute favourites. Um, if you, if for some reason you have a way to put this on your build, then do it. Um, let's have a look. Gain a persistent stack of escalating fate every two seconds. You are in combat, up to 30 seconds, up to 30 stacks max. Each stack of Escalating Fate increases your max stamina, health, and magic by 88. You lose a stack of Escalating Fate every four seconds you're out of combat. So, what I'll say is, by being a tank, anything that increases max stats is vital. Whenever I kind of put together a tank build, the things that I'm focusing most about are having five... Uh, heavy armor, having really high magical recovery, and having really high max stats. So, minimum 40k health is, uh, is what I generally aim for nowadays, and then trying to boost up my stamina and magicka as high as possible, without affecting other areas of my build. Max stats is absolutely vitally important. I just think that if you, the more max stats you've got, the easier it is to sustain, the easier it is to keep up all your buffs and debuffs, your taunt, your blocking, your dodge roll, everything. So if you've got 30k stamina, obviously you're going to have a much easier time to do everything you need to do than if you've got 21, 22, 23k stamina. Like, the lower your resources, the more difficult you make in your own life. Because then the more heavy attacks you've got to do. So the more, the more like, uptimes you're going to lose because you have to heavy attack more to get back the stamina. If you've got a 30k stamina pool, you have to heavy attack, like, less uh, often. And also, you're going to get more, like, you're going to be able to fill up your bar full of stamina again. When you use a potion, it's going to, it's going to, like, you've got more to fill up. You, you can spam Igneous Shield more if you need to. You can use your ultimate on a DK, get a big boost of stamina, and it's going to fill more of your 30k stamina bar. Uh, if you've got really low amounts of resources when you use your ultimate, you might overfill it, and then you don't get the extra that you're missing out. Do you know what I mean? That could happen if you have really low resources. So, I love to go with Triune, Tristat gear. So, I always have Triune jewelry for most things. I like to have Tristat on every piece of gear, because I like to spread out my resources, so I've got a lot of resources. And when you're combining your champion points with that as well, you can get some insane max stats. Some of my builds have 45k max health, 33k max stamina, which is more than a stamina damage dealer, and then 25k magicka. And that's especially if I can utilize the death dealer's fate in my build, I'm able to achieve those unreal stats. And when I've got those stats, everything is easy. Keeping up stagger, keeping up multiple buffs becomes so much easier because I'm able to make use of those really, really high resource pools. Um, in terms of a dungeon setup, Death Dealer's Fate is something I would have used um, last patch. Now it's not going to be as good because of one of the uh, one of the mythic items for the Deadlands is probably going to replace this. So this is going to be less useful. However, if you are using a monster set and using a, a gear set that you can one bar so let's say you're using powerful assault and you're using a monster set so powerful assault can just go on one bar you can use a monster set and then you can use a death dealer's fate that means that you get an absolute ton of resources this is a very very good mythic iron for tanks the only reason you wouldn't run it now is because you have to replace it with the spalder of ruin 
which is the new mythic item for the Deadlands. So that's the only time. But if you're not going to use that because you don't like the loss of um, your recovery, then obviously use this instead. Because, yeah, you're not going to lose the recovery anymore. You're going to keep your recovery and get massive stats. So anywhere that you can use the Death Dealer's Fate, use it. That's what I would say. If you've got any situation where you one bar in a set, see if you can fit the Death Dealer's Fate in there. Um, and, and, and it's going to really, really improve um, your ability to tank. Because having more resources makes tanking easier. It really does. Just remember that having really high pools of resources doesn't improve your sustain. So if you've got 30k stamina, but then you're trying to dodge all three or four times in a row, you're trying to do things like spamming taunt every four seconds, you're still going to run out of stamina. You still have to be thinking about, how do I manage my stamina well enough to make use of these higher resource pools? So you do have to still think about that. You're not going to be spamming skills. You do have to be a bit intelligent with how you use it, uh, but it will help sustain. On to the next one, Gaze of Sithis. Now, I have got a legendary video on YouTube about this, so go and check that out if you want to see more details about this. But the Gaze of Sithis adds 3, 2, 7, 6 max health. It also adds 1,025 health recovery. It adds 4,000 armor. It reduces your block mitigation to zero. So, in terms of PvE tanking, this is absolutely the worst piece of gear you could ever equip. This is the worst thing you could ever use as a PvE tank. There is not a single situation in the game where it's worth using. Um, having zero block mitigation isn't going to work for anything where you have to actually tank. So, if we, um, yeah, if we consider zero block mitigation, in most situations I have about 75% block mitigation sometimes up to like 80 plus percent depending on the cp and gear that i'm using so you can easily achieve 80 90 percent block mitigation uh, especially like like i say if you're using certain skills cp gear that kind of thing you're going to get more block mitigation when you've got 90 percent block mitigation what that means is you are removing 90 percent of the damage you're only taking 10 percent damage from a boss when you block so you're only taking 10 percent damage when you use the gaze of sithis and you block it's basically the same as taking an unblocked hit. Because your block mitigation is zero. So you're taking an unblocked hit. So that means you take 100% of the damage from that boss. So if that boss's base level damage is 100k. And then you block it with 90% block mitigation. You're only going to get hit for 10k. If you're wearing this, you're going to get hit for 100k. Because you're not able to mitigate any of the damage. You're getting hit full force. 100% damage straight to the face. It means you're going to die. So don't use the Gaze of Sithis for PvE tanking. I've seen some people try to I've seen people try to use it in some kind of meme builds and stuff, but they don't I don't think I think they're using like misform. And what I don't think people understand is 1025 health recovery doesn't work in misform. Your recovery is turned off. So having this even in mist form, I mean it's not gonna work next patch anyway. It's not gonna work in the Deadlands patch because misform's been nerfed in PvE. But people who use this on a vampire haven't thought through the idea. Yeah, you still got a max health in the armor, but you don't get the health recovery. As a vampire, your health recovery is turned off as a vampire in this form, so it doesn't work. Um, if you, if you don't believe me, you sp like just don't waste your time building up the like the reef. Don't build up the time. Don't spend the time or waste the time getting this mythic item. Please don't. Uh, just trust me. Just trust me on this one. Like I think I'm a trustworthy guy by this point. I've been making content for a lot of years. Uh, <laughs> I'm a reliable source of information. Don't waste your time getting the gaze of Sithis. Harpooner's Wading Kill. This is a damage dealer set. So, de uh, dealing direct damage grants you a stack of Hunter's Focus for one minute, up to 10 stacks max. You can only gain one stack of Hunter's Focus per second. Each stack of Hunter's Focus increases your critical chance by 1 to 5, and your critical damage by 1%. Taking direct damage removes five stacks. So, this is never going to be used on a tank, because it's not going to buff your damage, because you're going to be tanking enemies. When you tank enemies, it drops off the stacks, it means it's not going to work. So don't bother using it. Just let's just leave it at that. It's it's the absolute one of the best in slot pieces for a damage dealer, but for a tank you would never use it. The shapeshifter's chain uh, reduces the cost of your transformation abilities, transformation abilities by fifteen percent. While transformed, it increases your max health, stamina, magical by one seven zero seven. So if you're a vampire, a werewolf. A Goliath on a Necro, that kind of thing. 
you're going to benefit from the shapeshifter's chain. So very, very um, specific to a certain situation. So I guess in a way, if you're, if you're werewolf tanking for whatever reason, uh, you could use it for the extra stats. It's like putting on a really strong triune piece of jewellery. Because you could also make this, you could make this a triune piece of jewellery and get like almost double the value of triune within the same piece of, um, within the same piece of jewellery. So if you are werewolf tanking, shapeshifter's chain it could be something that you use. But typically, not worth it. Uh, right, finally, the last one. The mythic items for the Deadlands. Oh, wow. It's going to be something that I can't say. Belharzers. 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 Band. Guys, in the chat, what do we reckon? Belharzers? Is that, is that how you say it? Belharzers. Why do they have to have really confusing, difficult names to say? Belharzers Band. Belharzars. I don't, I don't know how you say it. <laughs> oh, do you know how long it took me to say the, the word Yolnakrin? Like, I was like, hmm, how do you say that? I used to call it Yol for so long. And then, like, now. Um, what's the one now? Sax. Sax Champion. I don't even say the full word. Sax Halil. Sax Halil. Sax Halil Champion? Is that how you say it? Don't know. Still don't know. I don't know how you say it, but I'm just going to make it up. Everyone will copy me because no one else has mentioned it. Right. Deadlands Mythic Items. We've got Belharza's Band, if that's how you pronounce it. Increase the damage of your light attacks by 900. When you deal damage with consecutive melee light attacks, gain a stack of Belharza's Temper for 10 seconds, up to 5 stacks max. At 5 stacks, consume Belharza's Temper. And after 1 second delay, deal... 4498 physical damage to enemies in a line and stun them for 3 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. So, kind of a lot going on. Kind of a lot going on with uh, Belharza's band. Um, I mean, just looking at it, it's not something that's going to be used for a tank. Um, it, looks, it looks like it's supposed to be some kind of PvE. Sorry, some kind of PvP. Mythic. I don't... Th like, the light attack damage. I don't know if that would be nice for for PvE, but... In terms of... The, from the tank point of view, from the tank perspective, this is not something uh, you're going to use. It's not. P like, for DDs, I don't know. You'd have to ask somebody who knows about that kind of stuff. Like, skinny cheeks. I stick to my lane. I know about tanking. I know when I see something tanking that's good, I'd like it. I know it. But when it comes to damage dealer stuff, I am completely useless. I'm going to be honest. Um, so yeah, that is not going to be used on a tank. And then we go on to the, another one. Oh, how do you say that? Marking. Is it marking? Marking? Marking Ring of Majesty. Guys, please help me out. Help me out. Chat. Help me out. So the next mythic item, the Marking Ring of Majesty. Gain 100 weapon and spell damage and 1,157 armor for every set you are wearing at least three pieces or more of. So, current bonus in the current setup that I'm in: 200 weapon and spell damage, 2,314 armor. Um, I don't think this is going to be used for a tank. Um, it's a damage buffing set again, and we're not going to sit around on three-piece gear sets. Trying to buff our stats up, do you know what I mean? It's just not going to happen. So, for a tank perspective, not useful at all. I don't really know where you would use... I mean, is this being aimed at PvP? Because PvP has, like, the three-piece gear sets, where you have, like, the weapons and the jewellery. Like, where you only need to combine three pieces of gear. So you have, like, I don't know, a one-handed one weapon, maybe, and two pieces... Of, I don't know. It's like... It's, it seems like they're trying to put it towards a kind of... Um, PvP kind of thing because you have those three piece weapons, set there's three piece uh, gear sets that come from PvP, but I don't know. I don't really know. Um, I don't think it's that, it doesn't look that good. But in terms of in terms of a damage dealer, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't really know. Okay, and then the last mythic item on the list. 
uh, the Spalder of Ruin. So this was, from what I can understand from what was written in the patch notes and stuff, is this was initially aimed at being a healer set. It comes in light armor. Light armor is good for tanks. Having one piece light, six pieces heavy. Good option. Very good option, option for tanks. Uh, the fact that it's light doesn't have a negative impact really at all. Um, it comes in infused, magicka, light armor. Um, activating crouch activates and deactivates a 12 second... Activating crouch activates and deactivates a 12 meter aura of pride. Up to six allies in the aura gain 260 weapon and spell damage. Reduces your health, magicka and stamina recovery by 70 for every ally benefiting from your aura of pride. So... For me, this is probably a meta set for the Deadlands patch. Now, the reason I say that is because in a trial situation, you could be on a Necro off tank and maybe the group healer. They would use this together, so they would both use it to try and get the buff on the whole group. And you'd wear infused recovery jewellery probably. You'd make sure you've got like barrier front bar as like another magical recovery source. You try and stack up your magical recovery really high. Stamina recovery makes no difference. Health recovery, not really that important. The magic, the loss of the magical reco recovery, magical recovery is going to be a, a bit annoying. However, it doesn't mean that like it's not going to be unplayable because of this loss. In a trial situation on an off tank, for example, you're going to lose 420 uh, magic, like we'll just say magical recovery because the other recoveries don't make a difference really for an off tank. You're going to lose 420 recovery if you give this to your whole group. So with, with one healer, one tank using this in a trial group, they buff the whole group. And it's a huge area. covers a huge area. You just crouch and then uncrouch. And that will give... that That's just a buff. People just need to stand inside the 12 meter circle. It's 12 meters, but it's a 360 degree circle. So it's a huge area. And it's very easy. People just stand inside that circle and they're getting the buff permanently. Now, they, the way that they worded this on the patch notes was they wanted there to be a sacrifice for a benefit. So, you sacrifice your recovery to give your group a really, really strong buff. So, 260 weapon and spell damage is better than Yolnokrin. It's a better buff than Minor Courage. It's also as easy to keep up as Minor Courage. Like, Minor Courage is maintained by a main tank using Yolnokrin and taunting an enemy. As a main tank, the very minimal thing you need to do is taunt the enemy. So you keep 100% uptime of Yonokrin just by keeping Tom. It's the same thing with this. It's it's so minimalistic. It's so easy to maintain that you've got to use it. There's no way that you're not going to use this because it's just so, so easy. You just crouch, stand back up again, and you've got the permanent buff in the room. As long as people are stood near you, you've got the buff. You don't have to do anything. It's just there. So it's vital. Um, so yeah, I definitely would say healer and off tank are going to be using this for trials. In terms of dungeons... It seems really drastic. It does seem drastic. If you consider the fact that... In terms of a dungeon, right? This set doesn't apply to you as the wearer of the set. The Spolder of Ruin, you wear it. You don't give yourself the buff. But you lose the Magicka Recovery. Okay. Just think about a dungeon. There's four people in a dungeon. You don't give it to yourself. So that's only three people that are going to be affected by it. So that means you're only going to lose 210 Recovery. So if you consider now, I have always promoted the use of um, Triune Jewelry to kind of buff up your tank and make your tank better. What you could do is you could still do that. You could afford probably to lose 210 recovery, especially now. If you are using the Void Bash set, like I've kind of advised um, on my streams and stuff a lot, then you're not going to really be missing out on a whole lot of magical recovery. The reason magical recovery has been so important in the past is because you're spamming chains, 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 um, talons, chains, talons. Like, you're spamming those skills and you're using a lot of resources. Now you're not going to do that anymore. You run into an ad pull, you throw down a caltrops, use, um, use, you, you proc your void bash set, and then you taunt everything. You don't actually use any magicka anymore. You, your magicka is used for spamming things like igneous shield, healing, um, maybe some crowd control. You're not using as much magicka nowadays as you were a few weeks ago. So, I don't think losing 210 recovery is that much of a big deal. For a dungeon group especially. I think this is more than useful for that. Now, the reason you would use this for a dungeon group is because in a dungeon 
most of the time, in most dungeons, your group should just be compact with the tank. There's not really many dungeons where they have to be really far away. Hardly ever is that the case. So using this is good. It's a permanent buff. So it's better than things like Magma Incarnate. It's going to be easier to maintain than Olorim and PA. It's not going to be easier than Yolnokrin. You could combine this with Yolnokrin. You could drop Yolnokrin and just like... Because Drake's Rush, for example, in a dungeon group, performs slightly better than Yolnokrin. Um, as long as people are dropping their ults on cooldown. Um, Olorim's a bigger buff. PA's a bigger buff. Yolnokrin is probably the set that you drop to use this in a dungeon. However, you can use Yolnokrin and this. You could use Yolnokrin, Olorim, and the Spalder of Ruin. But the main thing to think of is you have to lose a myth you have to lose a monster set to use this mythic. It's a shoulder piece, it's the spolder of ruin, it goes on the shoulder. So no matter what, if you use this, you drop in your monster set. If we consider monster sets, Magma Incarnate has got a 66% uptime. That provides mana courage. That like that's only giving your group probably a 1.5 to 2% DPS increase. If we look at um, if we look at Incratis as the other option of a monster set. That's giving your group somewhere about 0.5 to 1% DPS increase. This is going to be slightly more because it's a hard, it's a bigger buff than um, Minor Courage and it's 100% uptime. So potentially this is going to be somewhere around 3% DPS increase. So out of the three things, out of Minor Courage, Spoiler of Ruin and Encratis, this is going to be your best option in terms of raw damage power. So the Spoiler of Ruin, definitely worth picking up and using next patch. Um... And yeah, I would I would give that a go. I would switch your builds over to this because it's a more consistent buff. So that is that. So guys, that is all of the mythic items. That is all mythic items from the tank perspective. If you've got any questions, let me know in the chat. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching.